Как договорились у нас? Прошла минута. Я думаю, что As we said before, one minute has passed. I think that the people will join us. Let me introduce myself. My name is Anara Ayaganova. I'm the director for executive uh, personnel, and uh, I have my team with me. Uh, and from time to time, our school arranges the events open for everybody uh, to provide the expertise of either our experts working for the Nazarbayev University or we invite our partners. We have Mr. Yirnas uh, Izbirbenov, uh, who is the director for production of systems developments uh, at KTR, and he is going to be talking to us about the operational excellence and the concept of the operational excellence overall. As for the technical part, we do have the interpretation. Irnas is going to be providing his materials in English. For those who don't speak English, I think that we have uh, most of the audience who doesn't. Uh, you do have uh, the option to use the translation channels. So there is a globe icon and you need to um, click on the globe item and our interpreters will help you uh, comprehend the material in Russian. <coughs> and the Russians will be in Russian and the speaker is going to respond to you in Russian for your comfort. So the presentation is going to be in English and the rest is going to be performed in Russian if it is the most convenient format for all of you. We have muted all of the participants in order not to have any sound disturbances. So therefore, I would like to ask you in case if you want to ask questions and we favor the questions from time to time, you know, uh, you could uh, want to find out about the details of the practices uh, uh, or perhaps you have some questions regarding the concept. And there's also the function um, box on your panel and um, you need to raise your hand and uh, request for an opportunity to speak. So many of you have used this function. Thank you so much, Yirnas. I think that we make comments. Okay, good, good morning, everyone. Uh, my, my name is Yerna Sispirginov. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Anar's team, Anar and Anar's team for having me here today. Uh, thank all the participants for joining today's online conversation. Uh, before embarking into our topic, I would like uh, briefly introduce myself and go over my bio. And uh, while I'm doing that, uh, I would ask uh, to do me a favor using this uh, uh, feature that Anara mentioned, uh, raise your hand or just put your name and company or that you are representing today, or at least uh, put the field where you're, you came from, what industry you represent. And the third is from uh, one to 10 on the scale. One is minimum and 10 is maximum. Uh, please uh, put how much you are familiar with the Lean Six Sigma methodology. This, this would help me to build the conversation later on and maybe uh, draw. Uh, Ернас, простите, вас не слышно. Okay. Do, do you hear me? Okay, good. Uh, so I was asking uh, all the participants to put their names. First, second, please put the company you're representing or industry you came from. And the thirdly, from one to 10 of the scale, uh, one is a minimum, 10 is a maximum. Give uh, how much you are familiar with the Lean Six Sigma methodology. Uh, that will help me to build a conversation later on as we will be discussing the topic in more details. And 
this would help me to understand the level your familiarity with the, with this topic okay uh, so my background is a uh, mechanical engineering i have started my career at kazakhmys back in 2006 after working in kazakhmys for three years i decided to pursue my education uh, thanks to Balashak, Balashak scholarship program uh, i was able to get uh, my master degree in the United States uh, in manufacturing and mechanical systems integration. After three years of study, when I got back uh, to Kazakhstan, I joined General Electric uh, Transportation Division here in Kazakhstan. That's how I got my experience, vast experience in uh, heavy machinery. General Transportation is um, become the division who, who is responsible for assembling locomotives passenger locomotives and freight locomotives here in astana north sultan i'm sorry so um, this for six years i worked in ge I started as a reliability engineer representing moscow engineering team then i uh, worked as a in, in equipment instructor then I was promoted to the international lean leader, uh, basically helping out our customers around the world uh, to implement the best practices in maintenance, implement the uh, business processes, uh, helping them to do their job uh, faster and cheaper and uh, better. So uh, during uh, the same period of time, back in 2014, uh, I had started my own company, which is uh, because I, I really wanted to share with the knowledge that I had experience with the local companies, small and medium-sized business, business businesses, uh, to share with this methodology that would help them to stay on the market. And, and uh, that's how I started my journey of, as a Lean with Six Sigma uh, consultant. And uh, yeah, I have since then, I have developed a lot of uh, interactive trainings. I'm not used to these online sessions, but I prefer more face to face uh, interaction with the, with the students or our customers. So yeah, uh, I apologize if there would be some flaws in the, during our session today beforehand. Uh, but that's how the reality is, and we have to adapt. Yeah. Um, 2014 uh, uh, consulting and uh, training services. Uh, and uh, in 2018, I was invited to join the GTR Kazakhstan private company, which mostly uh, we're providing services in oil and gas industry to operate, to implement the operational excellence program here. And uh, today I will be sharing with some of the key concepts of this methodology, because uh, I'm confident that these concepts are, and tools are applicable in any business, no matter wh where you are. In fact, uh, business uh, process improvement methodologies, in other words, uh, operational excellence. Allow organization to achieve operation, operational improvements in, and maintain their competitive edge nowadays. And uh, the degree of excelling those methods uh, will determine a company's ultimate success in any business environment. So that's uh, briefly about myself, and I would like to spend some time and just go over the chat, and hopefully you, you've, you've, le you've left uh, the notes. Let's see what we have, and then we will proceed further with our topic today, okay? Let's do this. Let's see what we have here. Okay, we've got... Uh, We've got, okay, we have a machinery. Okay, 10, construction, I see construction, mining, good. 
that university, but not many people write. Please, uh, you have you still have time because it's very it, it would help me to understand uh, where you came from and uh, yeah, I see mining. Okay, university. Let me put it this way. So you all also can see construction from 10. Okay, we have Raihan with 10 scale in six sigma. Nice. Five. Okay. So we I see from maintenance. Техническая поддержка. Okay. А, техническая поддержка при добыче углеводородного сырья. Okay. Yes, so it's maintenance in hydrocarbon operations. Yeah. I just want to mention that uh, this concept of operational excellence, even though I, I came from uh, mechanical engineering and heavy machinery industry, I, I want to emphasize it one more time that the, these concepts are applicable in any industry, no matter where you are now. So, uh, okay, Greenbelt Transportation Services, I beg. Okay, okay. Well, thanks uh, for those of you who uh, left your comments. Thank you very much. And uh, hopefully the rest of the team, uh, the rest of the people will also join the conversation because I really need your interaction, okay? So today uh, I'm planning to discuss with you all on some of the common challenges uh, company leaders uh, and their team face, face nowadays. And uh, hopefully you would also take part in this conversation and maybe share with some of the, your thoughts on the, uh, listed uh, difficulties i would provide you the list of challenges and difficulties and uh, hopefully you also had a chance to comment on them maybe re reflect maybe say hey this is what's going on in my company as well and uh, maybe you can add something new that i don't have on my list so this this is uh, kind of a conversation i i hope to to have on the first part of the our presentation then uh, the third part would be devoted more on uh, giving the definition for the operational excellence concepts. And uh, lastly, I would be sharing with the standard procedure of uh, how this usually is being rolled out. Uh, I mean, the operational excellence programs. And so you can have a chance to maybe reflect the concepts in, in your case, in your company. And uh, for your convenience, uh, depending on, on your question, depending on how we would be progressing today during our conversation. I would I, I have prepared the attachment files, but those are in Russian. So if we have a more detailed question, uh, I, would, uh, I would dive in and maybe spend some time on also uh, developing certain, certain matters. So he, he, here's the plan as a ground, for those of you who just join our conversation, the ground rules are, if you wanna say something, please give us a heads up. And uh, I believe there is a button that you have to wave first then uh, our team uh, would, would give you the microphone and then here we go, you, you would have either have a chance to talk so we can hear you or you just uh, leave your comment. Either way, we would be happy to hear from you. Okay, let's move on. As you know, for the top manager and his team, the most important goal is to provide products or services on time, on budget, and on the right quality. While achieving these goals, top managers face many obstacles. And uh, I would ask everyone uh, spend 30, 50 seconds and read them through. And it would be nice uh, for me to hear from you on some of the challenges you might find identical in your cases, in your company. 
Uh, perhaps you might uh, want to add something that is not here. Yeah, I, I, I understand that this is not 100, it's not the 100 uh, full, 100% the list, it's not completed, but these are the very common, uh, in my opinion, uh, problems that the top managers and their team faces while trying to meet those you know, goals uh, while delivering service or products. So why, while I will be going through these challenges, please uh, feel free to leave a comment here. Maybe highlight some of the items uh, that I have already in my list saying uh, we also have uh, the same issue here. Maybe add something new that I, we don't have. It would be interesting to read. Well, micromanagement uh, in daily routine of the company. Dealing with everyday tasks eat up the most of the COE and top managers' uh, time. Instead of uh, building of strategic plans, he or she, uh, they have to deal with the daily routine, which is not good for the future of the company. And uh, with the developed IT technologies, with uh, globalization, digitalization, our world has become very small and customers are very demanding. They can instantly uh, Google and compare your product or services with others. Uh, the, these factors uh, forces companies to be always uh, customer oriented, customer sensitive, uh, which requires uh, a lot of resources. The, for instance, the same task is not uh, taking the same time to complete. Plus, you have always the variation in your costs and it also affects your bottom line income in the end of the day. Uh, in addition, such factors as uh, frustration and blaming each other also aggravates the situation. There is a silo thinking mentality or phenomenon when you have a big company, corporate company, if you're big enough, you have uh, different, different teams, departments, let's say, uh, I'm a maintenance guy and uh, I might have a, my all my decision in my company would be solely based on the interest of the maintenance department. I might sometimes uh, don't even think about how it's gonna affect the production side or maybe finance team or maybe legal team. And this, this, this silos, they, they are preventing teams the whole company from effective communication. And this is, this, is, uh, this is a very big problem because every department, every uh, team within the company, they think they are the best. They think they are, the most, they are doing the, the most important job in the company. And overall, it all affects the end results of service or product. Of course, uh, there is no silver bullet uh, that would solve all these issues uh, in, in one shot, but there is an integrated methodology that is applicable and could help to overcome most of these issues today. Uh, and operational excellence that uh, we're gonna talk about uh, is one of such methodologies. So let's say let's see what you've got here, and hopefully maybe maybe some of you would want to take the microphone and share with the, and comment on any of these uh, issues that we have, and uh, let's see what you have in comments here if you have comments. Okay. Oil and gas energy. So we have uh, Lean Six Sigma. Okay, open to opportunities. <laughs> Someone is looking for the job. Okay, but that's not what I asked. I asked <laughs> to see if you have comments on the listed problems. See if you have identical issues or maybe uh, some other. Let's see. Competence and soft skills in in. in 
and securities within the employees create silos. Okay, agree. Yep, agree. Soft skills. Yeah, sometimes you might be a good engineer, but you don't have a, a emotional intelligence. You, you you don't know how to deal with other departments, and that is also uh, very true. Yep, create silos. Agree. Lack ecosystem thinking. Lack ecosystem thinking. Yep. Agree. Raihan, thanks for the comments. Oh, stakeholders, ever changing stakeholders, uh, state regulators. Yep, uh, so changes in legal requirements and stakeholders also could affect the, the strategy, hence the project goals or the initiatives. Also very true. Is there anything that you, you think is not in the list? And uh, let's see, let's see. Please uh, participate because uh, this, this is, uh, for me, it's also good and insight, insight from different industries. So instability in legislation and lack of competence in judicial system. Yeah. Uh, constraints in legal requirements and instability also causes that managers and top managers, they don't make a, a decision that would affect the long term. They all their decisions uh, based on the short term. They think that, Yanas, why would I care what would happen with me or with the company in six months? Because uh, I mean, uh, I'm going to change the place. They don't make a decision that uh, would affect uh, the company in the long run. And uh, plus, if they, they know that the, the legislation changes and uh, all the uh, legal requirements, all these changes, uh, it also would uh, stop them from uh, making those uh, good, good decisions for the company. Maybe, maybe hard, hard decision for now, but uh, in the long run, uh, it would affect, come back with a good uh, impact. So, There is a, uh, okay, Anara is commenting. So personal personal burnout, yep, that's a big thing. Uh, it's all related with the culture. It's all related, uh, yeah, there is a, we will talk about in more details about personal burnout and uh, especially when, yeah. It's this is uh, this is a big uh, because uh, the key asset of any company is the personnel, is a human. And, uh, professionals, it so happened that they burn out if there is no uh, good incentive in place, if there is no program for development, if there is no employee management system on place, if there is no uh, on time feedback and uh, understanding from the company perspective, what other strengths and weaknesses of their employees and what they want to, uh, uh, what, what are the plans uh, in terms of the key personnel. This is also uh, affect the uh, effectiveness of whatever they're doing in the company. So lack of succession planning, low retention rate, Yes, agree. Retention, retention of full qualified and trained personnel. That is also related to HR and everything with the with the company culture, with the program of uh, yeah retention of uh, uh, good professionals. So nowadays it's very since it, now it's you can see it especially in oil and gas industry, in uh, machinery, heavy machinery, uh, the professionals are in great demand. So toxic environment, no training and development, micromanagement, no work balance through STEM. Thank you. Lack of understanding and enforcing of accountability at all levels. Yeah, and this is, 
this is a lack of understanding. Yep, we will spend some more time, and this is directly related on that how you top managers convey the strategic plans and cascade it to the understandable and clear goals and objectives to the lower levels in the organization. And this is this is something. <clears throat> it's all about operational excellence. It's yeah. Well, corruption is corruption is a noise factor. There is no answer in my program because it's out of scope. I cannot do anything about corruption. It is, uh, let's let's just, let's do the assumption that we don't have a corruption. Otherwise, I mean, I agree that corruption <laughs> ruins everything. No matter what you do, if there is a corruption. Uh, there is no point of even starting. Because uh, I don't know. Maybe we have to start another online conversation about it, but not not today. So agree, agree. This is a big thing because uh, I've, I've uh, experienced it myself because I, I had many cases that I, I really wanted to, you know, uh, help the companies. I say, hey, this is this is what you need. This is this is the program. This is the training you need. This is let's do it. And uh, the top manager say, this, what's in it for me? The question, and uh, I was very, very upset uh, hearing that. And uh, yeah, that's a big thing. Unfortunately, I cannot do anything about it. So let's put it out of scope of today's program. So lack of single vision and common goals management. Problem. Yes, this is directly related to today's topic. How you manage to come up with the strategic plans and do you have a vision mission? How you make sure that everyone in the organization understands what to do on their own level. Yeah. Uh, lack of understanding. Yes. Accountability. This is also related. Yeah. Yeah. Good, good comments. Thank you for those of you who is uh, typing. Maybe someone wants to take a microphone and uh, go through. And uh, I mean, the, the, the well, let's let's hear from you. How, how many people we have on our today? Yeah, 36. So <clears throat> change management obstacles among employees, especially among employees. Yes, silos, the same thing when everyone thinks from their own perspective and uh, any decision is being made only uh, for the interests of their departments, whether it's maintenance, production, legal, finance, and everyone is trying to, how to say that, uh, any decision, not necessarily uh, thorough thought about the consequences on other departments so that that's a big issue and uh, there is an answer how you overcome those problems in, in today's topic change management obstacles yes we did it yes okay more more comments if you want me to proceed further let's do it uh, but uh, i i really wanted to spend time here because it's uh, I mean we have to know why we're doing it uh, if we are not uh, saying ourselves yes these are the problems that we want to solve and I mean, they, because the answer would be following seven or eight slides so it would be nice to hear from you first uh, maybe <clears throat> Maybe you don't agree with this problem. Maybe you say, hey, this is uh, it's not true. I don't agree. That's also acceptable. OK, I see that uh, comments stopped. So that would give me the signal that to, I should proceed further. So challenges and difficulties. So this, these are the challenges. When I started my journey, KTR, this is what CEO of the KTR had listed in front of me. And they said, can you help? 
And that's when we, back in 2018, we started our journey in, uh, implementing this program, Operational Excellence Program. So what, what is Operational Excellence? And uh, there is a book that was published and written in 1995. They called this The Discipline of Market Leaders. And you can see the authors. And uh, the core of the book is based on uh, five years of uh, five years of research and about the companies, uh, market leaders, by the way, during that time, such as Walmart, Dell, Southwest Airlines, uh, Home Depot, uh, Intel, and Sony. When the researchers uh, were trying to find the answer, what was it? that made these companies so successful, uh, they all stated the same thing. They said, they, all we did is we choose to excel in uh, delivering uh, our extraordinary levels on one of these factors. You can see it here. You can see it, it's a customer intimacy. So understanding your customer very well. The product leadership, the example is uh, that, for instance, like an Apple company always upgrading their product line or car industry and operational excellence. This, this is the, the third, the last but not least. And they say that all you need is to excel in, in, in operational excellence and maintain maybe the standard level on the rest customer intimacy product leadership because they are controversial you have to find the, the optimum optimum level of the world but you cannot neglect them uh, at all so what is operational excellence and, and this uh, it's a philosophy of managers for leadership team teamwork and the ability of this thing to solve systematic problems on their own, by the way, not not foreign consultant, no no one, but them. Uh, it's about the philosophy that requires and leads uh, to continuous uh, incremental improvement of all uh, division that you have in your company, and uh, these uh, groups should be focusing on the needs and the expectation of the clients. By the way, clients, you, you have clients external, that's your, that's, that's the business. I mean, you sell your product or service and plus it's about the, you know, uh, the um, ability of this internal silos groups to perceive each other as internal customers and try to really do their best to understand what do I need to do so I can see the, the further down in the line, my colleagues, what do I need to provide? What kind of data, what format, and how often should I give them the information so, so they can do their job properly and correctly. Perceive each other as uh, internal clients, this is the key. So it's a philosophy of leadership, teamwork, and ability to solve these uh, systematic problems and plus, uh, creating this culture that everyone is trying to optimize their own business processes because <clears throat> no matter what you do there is always people there is always some key processes that you do it on daily basis if you think about it if you train your team and let them let them on daily basis, incremental change, maybe help them do their job faster, even for five minutes or 10 minutes faster than yesterday or last week or cheaper. If they're spending a certain amount of money, that's your cost or budget on, on delivering certain amount of service or product. This, uh, this is something that uh, your team could could work on on speed, cost, and quality 
quality could be different for everyone is different the definition for quality but the thing is uh, these are the three items or goals that should be teams should be working on so this philosophy is closely related to other continuous improvement methodologies but mostly yeah, it's all uh, interrelated with lean six sigma methodology that's that's why i asked how much you are familiar with lean six sigma methodology i have my uh, black belt six sigma certification that i got from american society of quality and uh, maybe not many of you know that uh, th this is a big deal it's it's the same as a, for business a candidate to get an mba or to get a cca for the accountant so in in my field in quality in manufacturing and engineering it's it's a big deal and it it requires a lot of effort to do the projects and plus uh, those are the those tools that engraved in this body of knowledge are very useful and many, maybe uh, companies in, in our region, in CIS region, maybe they don't appreciate, you know, international standards, they don't appreciate this certification, international certification, but I, I know that some of the portion of the tools and concepts, they could be very valuable, especially in our today's world, when you have to be very competitive, there is no, uh, we we are in the same economic zone with the Belarusian and Russian. Plus, we have a lot of foreign companies that requires us to to be competing to 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 meet the requirements on international level. And if we are not ready, we're not competitive. If we're not competitive, we will we will. We will not survive in the, in the future. As a, I am talking about as a businessman, as a, as a business, as a company. So, uh, in a few words, uh, that's what's operational excellence. It's very integrated process that really, uh, really connects everything, everyone, leadership, teamwork, the method, the methods you overcome the obstacles and challenges and creating this environment that will help you to do your job faster, cheaper, and better. To at this point, do you have any do you have any questions or comments? Let's see what we have in our chat. So maybe someone wants to take a microphone and uh, comment on this uh -huh. <laughs> so it's that's the, that's my yeah, definition yes of course uh, people can just raise their hands um, and uh, we will give you the right to speak to say your comment and to ask a question talking on uh, standard procedures and how we, we enroll and what are the building blocks this operational excellence consists of and depending when you, where you are in uh, this you know every company has its own journey yeah and uh, they have their own level of maturity and, uh, depending on where you are in this development uh, you have to choose the strategy where to start from so this this uh, the the following slides would be uh, developing on this topic See. So, uh, no, no comments so far. I don't know whether it's good or bad. Okay, uh, let, let, let's continue. <laughs> so, as I mentioned, uh, KTR has started their journey, has started its journey in 2018. It's a long way. It uh, requires a lot of resources and uh, commitment on, 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 on all levels, starting from the stakeholders, the top managers, middle managers, and even the, the simple workers. So the model, as you can see, sorry, the chart, 
as you can see, the model uh, has a circle shape and companies uh, could start from anywhere depending on their maturity level. Uh, by the way, did you, did you know that uh, only 5% of the workforce uh, understand their company strategy? And uh, only 25% of managers, they have incentive link to company strategy. And uh, around 60% of the old companies, they don't even link their budget to the strategy. I'm not talking about like uh, how many time of executive uh, or top managers allocate their time. And, uh, Researchers show that 86% they, they spend less than one hour per month discussing strategy. This, is, uh, this data shows directly that uh, there is always uh, this you know, gap between the people who make this strategy and who execute, execute this strategy. There is no bridge or connection that would enable these executors, the, the people who, who really does the job, who do the job, uh, and people who make the strategy. There is no way of effective communication because COE always blames uh, these uh, specialists or experts. They don't understand. I mean, I, I'm telling them what to do and they don't understand and they don't really execute what I wanted. And execute the, the people who really do, do, all, do the, all the work uh, they always blame executives or executors or top managers. They don't, they, they make their strategy, but they don't even understand the real situation. And that's, that's like Montek and Capuletti. <clears throat> that's what's going on right now. And this uh, operational excellence strategic planning helps, you know, to connect these dots and helps to effectively communicate between people who make this strategy and planning make the vision and uh, really turn into this understandable and clear objectives and goals. So uh, if, you are, if you are in the company that have uh, international standards developed, that, that means you have a vision, mission developed, you, know, you have a strategy deployment, and, uh, maybe you are using the key, key the, process indicators in, in your work. So you, we might have a pro, uh, company that they don't have it. They don't have it. And they started from here, from 12 o'clock, maybe you have. So this, uh, okay, let, let, me, let me stop on this uh, four main building uh, blocks and in more details later. Uh, for now, I would uh, just want to show you the main building blocks that will help to achieve this uh, company's uh, ultimate goal. Uh, and we know that companies, all the companies' ultimate goal is to, in, to have an increased profit. So increased profit would be achieved by what? Uh, by reduction of losses, reduction in variation in process, because every variation costs money, every variation. And uh, maybe improved quality and deliver speed. You have a re reduction inventory levels because uh, you know that the inventory that is stocked in your warehouses, it's a frozen money. So you could, you could have, <clears throat> I'm sorry, you could have used these uh, resources and some other uh, investment projects. So manufacturing flexibility, or in, if you are from the field that uh, is not the production, so the flexibility business, agile business overall, and satisfies customer. These are the main goals that uh, top managers and their team strive to, to achieve. So what helps to, to, to reach these goals? Well, for ISO, or some other standards is the foundation. Why? Uh, you have to stabilize the process. Good or bad, your processes have to be very stable. Uh, otherwise, uh, you cannot start 
any initiatives uh, that would improve it. You cannot improve the not stable process. So first thing you have to worry about is that's what we did back in 2018. We started to implement international standards, which helped us to you know strengthen our documentation, more or less formalize our communication plan with the departments, and formalize everything the, the way we do the business. And uh, you don't necessarily have to implement this ISO standards. I put the ISO, it's just the me meaning that you have to standardize whatever you are doing because there are some processes that make makes money. There are some additional supporting pro processes that help the team that makes money uh, to organize everything. It's like finance, accountant, legal, IT, and you have a core. And uh, you you need to understand what are those processes you need to understand and control those processes and make sure that you have the same consistent result good or bad no matter as long as it's stable then you go good to go to the next level which is having uh, key process indicators then you have to learn how to the, the next foundation is you have to learn how to measure those uh, process indicators there is a saying that if you cannot improve the process unless you are measuring it, if you start measuring any process that is important to your business, then uh, let's see. The, there is a comment that I cannot see the full slide. Is it is it true, Anar? Do, do you see this slide? Да, я вижу, я написала свой комментарий. Почему? А, окей, окей. Это было, когда yeah. вы увеличивали его. А, got it. Statistics above 5% of workers who understand what that is worldwide in Kazakhstan. No, by the way, that statistics, it's a worldwide, not in Kazakhstan. I believe in Kazakhstan it's even worse. So, uh, that, that is, uh, yeah, it's a worldwide statistic, including uh, US and European countries. <clears throat> so the next foundation, if you are able to manage, uh, to measure your key processes, then you're good to go. In, then you understand. It's like a sportsman. When you, you, if you run or swim, you have to understand your current level, where you are, what is your heart rate, uh, on what pace you run or swim, how many how many uh, push-ups you do, etc. You have to understand your current level. You have to be able to measure it. If you don't measure it, you won't be able to say whether you improved or not later on after one month or two months or three months. So that's very important. And you see these three main building blocks. I would zoom in, so don't worry. Uh, so the, this, the first one is methodology and philosophy. And this is the, the notion where it comes from. Everything starts from the you know, vision and philosophy. So this philosophy that Lean and Kaizen brings in, it's very important. Uh, it all starts from this methodology. Six Sigma helps to eliminate this variation in the process, Lean processes or Kaizen. Uh, processes, uh, projects, they help to make your process shorter, make, make it lean, make it faster. So yeah, the methodology and philosophy, so define, measure, analyze, improve control phases, helps organization and teams to stay, to, to be focused on the right projects, to be able to stop on the, before, you find out that uh, the project is very, um, how to say that? Uh, it's a bad project. I mean, the result, the outcome is small, but the resources it used a lot. And you end up having like, oh, we spend a lot of time, we spend a lot of money, but I mean, there is more uh, important project that we should have started in the end of the, uh, I mean, the beginning of the year. 
So to avoid that, you have to be able to, you know, uh, create certain gates, like with the board of the meeting saying like, this is the problem. Yes, we agree. Are we going further? Yes, let's analyze it, define it, measure it, analyze it, improve it, control it. And uh, on each level, there are certain responsible uh, people with the cross-functional team that allows you to go and proceed further and further. If at some point your uh, company sees that uh, there's no point of uh, continuing this project, it's, it's being seized, that's it. Let's, let's, do, let's refocus and start an, another project. So things like uh, the methodology and philosophy are the main. Uh, then you have to create based on this methodology and philosophy, so if you take a closer look, you have a Kaizen, you have a value stream mapping, those are the tools. Total productive maintenance for the folks who is responsible for the maintenance part. This is the TPM that came from the Toyota. And uh, also, uh, there is, um, I spent uh, four years of my life in the engineering team, Moscow team, implementing this uh, best practices in maintenance oriented for the reliability part. So this is also something very similar to operational excellence, uh, but it's more tailored to the maintenance part. How you, how you make sure that your equipment is available 365 days. Uh, how you make sure that, I mean, uh, you, you load them properly. How you make sure that you control the quality and maintenance and things like that. And you have, um, what is, you have this culture. You have this. Uh, hopefully you see it. So management support is the key. No matter what you do, no matter what the, the initiatives, how many people you have, if there is no support from managers, I mean, you don't even start uh, if there is no understanding of what what is what is it that your customer comes back and buys your, your service and product, I mean if uh, and and every and everybody in the company or all departments they don't understand what is it that uh, the customer is paying for. Plus, if there is no understanding of who is my internal customer who do I serve within my company and uh, who is my internal customer? And uh, I mean, the, the communication and the process that is being created uh, as a result is, uh, would be ineffective if there is no that understanding. So customer focus uh, is a key. A continuous improvement, if you have uh, created a culture that everybody in the company is trying, they don't, they, they're not afraid of raising hands, waving, saying, hey, there is a problem. By the way, this is a big thing in, in Kazakhstan. I, I, in, in European countries and in USA, you don't have a problem saying employee raising hand, hey, I see problem. And this is, this is what I think we should do. But here in Kazakhstan, I mean, there is a, how to say that, there is an internal, maybe it's because of the, I don't know, but the fact is not many people in the company are willing to raise hands and say, hey, I see the problem because they are afraid of being punished. They are afraid of being uh, somehow, uh, they, they, they are afraid of getting the consequences of, of uh, of their the common, so they would prefer to keep silent and continue what they're doing. But the thing is, the problems that started this big on the conceptual design phase, for instance, would grow like this. In the end, it and, and when there is no way you can hide it, then I mean it's very expensive and it's very painful for everyone. Uh, I guess that's that's the way how it is now, but I think uh, we should change and we should do something in our culture. It's like, uh, I know that the Kazakhs, they don't ever show up in the doctor's room <laughs> unless they're dying. You know? they, 
it's the same thing here. You, you have to you have to do the regular checks and proactively take care about your body. So yeah, five uh, S program is a big thing. It's uh, applicable mostly it's in manufacturing and industry and production, but it's also effective in the office. It's, it's uh, the concept that helps people organize their working place, sort out, sort the things, maybe uh, set it in order so you can find it, all the tools you need very quickly. It affects your direct mood and uh, it's good for the, uh, for the overall uh, mood of the, of the team and the environment you're working in. Plus it affects the, the quality of the work you're doing. So using statistics, uh, the, the culture of using statistics, the culture, the managers have to be very statistical thinkers. They have to be very system, system thinkers. They, their decision have to be made, uh, not only today's something to, something happened today and I have to make my decision. They have to be able to, to, to do the step back and see that the, and collect the data, maybe see the, try to look at the situation from different angles and perspective and see the, maybe what's going on in terms of the one week or three weeks or water or six months. And they would be able to see the trend and variation. And by understanding this statistics, your decision would be more accurate and you won't maybe uh, be, reacting to today's problem as if you you're not using statistics and you are overreacting to today's problem and this this could mislead uh, the way you overcome the problem and plus it affects directly to your mood to the hence if you're a top manager and you're angry and you're very upset it affects the because the you know the managers and top leaders it's a mirror of the organization uh, it affects to your team, the rest of the team. So using statistics, it's uh, very, uh, I mean, important for everyone to, in the company. So analysis of the existing processes, improve process development. This is uh, the culture. It's, it's the way we work here. For instance, at TTR, we have created several procedures. We have created the rules that we have. If you have an idea, that will help to do your job faster, better, and cheaper, then share with us, we'll pay you money. Every idea costs money. We pay 5,000 yenge for every idea. And I mean, uh, for the first two, two years in, in our plant, I mean, we had a lot of ideas. Those ideas are very small, but imagine this. Maybe you might think that your idea is not like, big and it's not important, but think about this. Uh, every, uh, if everyone in the company at the same time would increase, maybe do the one step further and increase their job, whatever they're doing at the same time, overall for the company, it affects, I mean, the, the, the results are great. Even you might don't think about from your perspective, you, they think that, well, it's, it's not important. But if everyone on daily basis, on weekly basis, would constantly would be striving to improve whatever they're doing overall, it would affect the cycle time. Overall, it would affect their, their expenses uh, to the cost. And overall, it would affect the cost, uh, the, the quality of the product or service. So uh, the third column is tools, tools that help to brainstorm the ideas, to collect the ideas, to analyze, to maybe make priorities, to, to tools that help. To, before improving something, you have to be able to understand where you are to, to make the gap analysis, to grow the current process. You have to map the process, you have to brainstorm, you have to collect the cross-functional team and. Uh, things like that. You have to use all sorts of tools like FMEA. By the way, it came from the um, auto, 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 auto industry. 
failure mode effect analysis. Engineers uh, use that tool a lot, but it also affects, it's uh, something similar to risk management. A lot of uh, companies use that also. Uh, control charts, it's uh, okay. I agree that I need to use statistics. So what tools I should use? Control charts, histograms, Pareto diagrams. Uh, yeah, these, these are the basic tools that you should, people should use. So if you make sure that you have a right philosophy on place and you have a right culture, you are uh, supporting this culture and you have the right tools with the right training, then you could be sure that company would reach the ultimate goal, which is increased profit, because it directly affects to this uh, sub goals of the company. So do you agree with this or disagree? I need your comments. Uh, yeah. let's, let's see what we have. So, Asia, absolutely согласна. У нас не могут выразить собственно. I absolutely agree. Our people do not uh, uh, express their meanings. Their meaning. I am working currently at KTR. I have created, you know, uh, policies. Uh, you have to be. Don't don't worry about retaliation or don't worry that if you raise your hand and say problem, you have to. I mean, uh, you have to be able to raise your hand and say something, and I'll pay you money and uh, make sure. I mean, uh, I will make sure that no one would uh, punish you for that. And plus, I will make sure. Uh, I mean, uh, I will make sure that we will thank you, and we will be in the end of the year. We will be. Uh, saying that what is the best 5S project, what is the best idea, and who did what what kind of problems they solved on, on the area. And I, I'm, I'm cultivating this culture. It is hard, but I, I think it's, uh, it's doable. Yeah. Okay. Let's move on. Are we are on time? Yes, we are on time, good. So these are the benefits of operational excellence to achieve the steady growth. Sorry. To achieve the steady, prop, steady profit growth, uh, you, can, you, can, you can achieve that with the right customers and the right suppliers. If you are able to to come up with the policy that would enable you to, to choose the right suppliers and to choose, prioritize the right customers, then it will affect your steady growth profit, steady profit growth. If you have able to attract the best people in the market and plus retain, I mean, make sure that, I mean, they stay in your company, they have a good incentive, they have a good development program, the culture of the company such great so no one wants to leave uh, the turnover of the company uh, it's uh, very very small the percentage that's it directly affects the the steady profit growth uh, of the company if you have a performance management i mean you if you if you develop the the culture of the process performance if you cultivated in your teams such uh, approach that everyone could uh, use the special metrics uh, program uh, come up with the key process indicators that could could measure their success whether it's a cost or speed or quality this is something uh, also uh, very important and could affect directly to the steady profit growth plus if you have a world-class operating system procedures and you are able to build the class procedures that standardize, first of all, standardize your key processes, 
then making sure that uh, communication is very effective within the company. So, and uh, it, it all that, it all affects, directly affects to this, the way the, your company grows. These are the, some, but the tangible benefits. And you, have, you also have, it's operational excellence is more than increasing profitability. It also making sure that you have a sustainable development in the long run, uh, you have uh, you have a team. Key assets of the, any company is a team, and you are you letting them develop, you letting them speak up, you letting them raise their hands and feel feel make give them the sense of uh, ownership of their of, of their work they do, give them sense of involvement and appreciate their help appreciate you you are creating such environment so it's not all, all about money it's sometimes it's all about you know creating the company the place where you are you want to stay if you feel if i feel that i'm valued if i feel that everybody is appreciating my input wh why would i ever think of leaving this company so it's about and if I feel like I, I I have a clear vision of development and I have an option of development, whether to grow the company uh, up in the hierarchy or grow across the company or maybe just deepen my engineering knowledge. It's up to me if I have that option and if I know the, if I see the clear path in the employee management system, why would I? even think about leaving the company. Um, it's the operational excellence also gives the risk management. I mean, it, it, it improves the risk management because uh, top managers, they're not gods. They, they, they cannot oversee all the problems. Yeah. In fact, all the problems knows uh, people who, who does the job. Uh, there is no way you, you you know the job from from the person more than the from, from the person that uh, is actually doing the job but the thing is if you are creating such environment that this person would hap happily will be willingly uh, i would say share with his expertise and willingly share uh, with his concerns that hey this, you know, material supply might be an issue, and it could could it could be the risk uh, in our project. And the, the, this key information that comes from the bottom, it's a risk, it, a risk assessment. So you have to be able to also create this program and collect this uh, information. HEC safety is first, uh, especially if you are. I mean. Uh, there is no uh, nothing important. Let me put it this way: nothing important uh, than human life. You cannot put at the risk uh, to your, your your life, your colleague's life, and health and safety. So you it this operational excellence also helps to create this safe uh, environment for the workers. Uh, by the way, this is this was something you know back in two thousand five when I was a student. Uh, when I was a student, uh, and I, I had a chance to get uh, this international exchange program, and I spent my three months of my life in Spain, uh, traveling across the country, visiting all the enterprises. That's when I got fueled my interest and. In, I got back from that trip, you know, with a lot of questions. Why, why, why is such a big difference between our workers and their workers? Why, why are they getting paid very high? And why it's the safety part is very, this is what got me most my attention. Why are they all wearing glasses and helmet? Why they have a good PPE on them? We're not different. I mean, uh, why, why don't we do this? This, this, this is, these thoughts uh, were with me and it forced me to think through this and uh, 
in my journey, and th I think that this is something that uh, you know, helped me to 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 develop as a professional. And now I had a chance in KTR. We have a lot of projects and plans in Atarau that we are creating this environment. First of all, we are creating a safety environment for our workers. I mean, the light, the temperature, the, the tooling, even the restrooms and everything, even the coffee machines, everything is for the workers, even the right tools on the right place. So yeah, uh, safety is first. And uh, if you do the old things that I mentioned, you, you would become a, I mean, eventually, you, your, you and your company, your team will become a number nine, number one choice for employment. That, that's what's going on in TTR also. I mean, uh, we are number one partner and choice in, in oil and gas industry. Yes, we're now going for mining. We're now going for rail, rail industry, heavy machinery. But yeah, they, people, our partners uh, see developing us because we are developing and investing in people and technology. So, yeah. So, uh, how it works, uh, this achieving operational excellence uh, requires uh, integrated implementation of main four blocks. It's a strategy deployment. You have to be able to have a vision, mission, uh, and purpose, uh, whether you do you want to be in the moon in five years? So, I mean, land on the moon, or you want to go to other some other planets? You have to have that vision, and <clears throat> you have to have a strategy how you get to the moon, what kind of spacecraft, what do you need, what kind of fuel you're going to use, how many people you need, and the strategy deployment, and how you make sure that this strategy strategy aligns with the links uh, of the execution. How do you make sure that the people who does the job really understand what you need? So this is uh, strategy deployment. Then the next building block is performance management. You have to be able to, you have to be able to make sure that the, all the processes they are translate, effectively translate all the strategic initiatives or goals into clear and measurable uh, goals on each layer. Okay, I want to do the, I want to serve the, all the foreign companies and oil and gas industry. Okay, what does it mean for me as a welder? How, how many points should I work? What does it mean for CNC operator? How many tools and how many uh, parts, sub-assemblies should I assemble or machine? So you have to be able to convey that message into clear and understandable terms uh, on each level for clean communication. So this performance management block is responsible for that. Of course, on the, on the blue uh, circle, you, you see the tools that helps you to do that. And uh, one of the big tools that we, by the way, I forgot to say that on strategic deployment, we, on annual basis, we conduct a strategic planning session where we have a team, top managers, uh, the, the leaders of the team uh, gathering in one place on annual basis, uh, sharing with their, their goals, what they, they have achieved, what problems they had past year, and what the ideas, uh, suggestion of improving, what are the potential projects we should invest. Of course, this happens after the COE of the company shares with the vision where we want to be in uh, five uh, or 10 years or three to five years, I'm sorry. So the, the block performance management is responsible for, we, we use the balance scorecard. In Russian, the system is balanced on the balance scorecard. We call it uh, so. This performance management uh, helps employees to understand and focus on uh, priorities. 
reduce, it helps also reduce the number of metrics to few vital uh, key performance indicators. If you're interested, I could also show in our attachment. Then and, uh, it strengthen and formalize the project section to focus on capabilities and uh, potential problems that might turn out uh, during the execution. And plus it's on, from financial perspective goals, from the business development perspective, from business processes perspective, and from HR perspective. These goals and objectives and metrics, they have to be interrelated based on the strategic vision of where we wanna be for the closest two or three or five years, yeah? So the next block is, again, this is, uh, this circle, you will start from, it depends on where you are in maturity level of the organization. If you have a vision, mission, strategy, if you have a measure, performance measurement set already, if you are using balance core card, then I guess you, you can, you can uh, start working on um, improving your processes. You can start working on uh, maybe delivering uh, more efficient, more effective processes. So this is where Lean and Six Sigma methodologies and 5S uh, comes comes handy because this, these are the methodologies that helps to teams to create such environment. And by the way, it consists from, we have, Launch the program. We call it Lean Six Sigma Certification Program uh, at KTR. It's it's a big program that requires you to go through every single participant. Have to go through the intensive training, online training, interactive training. They have to do the project and show the board what they did. What are the aspects they have improved? They have improved in the company. And uh, yeah, this is very big program. Per, 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 project that it's a one year journey for each uh, candidate here. But the result is that you have people change agents in, in the team across the company who always would be thinking, how do I improve my, my work? How do I save money? How do I uh, uh, strengthen my quality? So this is something that uh, I have created online courses for those of you who are interested could write me in personal. I will be happy to provide the link at Udemy courses, it's available. So nine hours operational excellence course in Russian. So in the end, so this is this this third block is for about all process improve. And uh, the, the last block, operational excellence can be achieved with the right attitude with the right mindset and with the right competences and right people on place. If, if you're not creating such environment in the company, I mean, uh, the, the, rest, the rest blocks will not work. So this is something that we are working on it. Uh, we haven't, if for instance, first three blocks, I was able to start each project on there. Now we just on our, I'm, I'm talking about KTR. Now we are starting developing our EMS system, employee management system, where every single uh, uh, manager, top manager, middle manager, and the, 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 the layers in the organization have the clear goals. Then every quarter they would have, imagine the company where every single employee would be uh, giving the reports online against the strategy goals, what he did from his perspective, uh, what other metrics he, he, that helped him to say whether he did a good job or bad job, or what, how many money he saved, or what are the metrics. Did he improve his timing? Did he improve the quality? So things like that. So this improves and ensures that everybody in the company understand what is expected. Everybody in the company understand what, I mean, have the opportunity to say, this is what I did, and maybe to get a bonus for that. I mean, this is also important to get the, the feedback for that. So yeah, uh, four blocks, 
strategy development, performance management, uh, process improvement, and high performance for teams. And this is uh, how it works, the, the cycle of practical. Behind each sentence, in, uh, there is a big programs you have and tools you have to carry on. And it's not like happens in one day. It requires a lot of preparation. But I mean, it's possible. Do, do you have a, by the way, do you have a question on, on this, how it works? Because late, uh, then I, I have only two slides and I, I will be spending some time on focus group and maybe shedding some light on how this focus group works and why they do doing and how, how you make sure that uh, cross-functional teams and each uh, across the company will work on uh, different problems. What are the standard phases? Do you, do you, do you, do you want to make a comments or maybe have, have a microphone and share with your vision? Maybe you don't disagree. Maybe you don't agree with it all. <laughs> So let's see. So we have uh, five minutes to go, yeah? Okay. Feel free to leave your comment and uh, wave your hand if you want to say something. Okay. Okay, there is a suggestion that we skip the questions. That means you want to see the end of the slides. That's good. <laughs> okay, uh, so focus group 12, uh, 12 groups. Uh, so let's put this focus 12 working groups. We have uh, 12 working groups. And first, we, of course, we are now, we, we've selected 50. Uh, People, candidates, and in the future, they will be working on 12 different areas. As you can see, in any company organization, you have, a, let's see, you have a groups. They, all these groups have uh, three common goals. It's making their process better, faster, and cheaper. And we have a group that would be working on uh, health and safety, maybe employee development. We have one, one group uh, working on this, you know, strategic marketing, commercial management, uh, project management, engineering project, because every single division, every single uh, direction actually uh, requires improvement. And uh, when we have our 12 groups working on these areas, we ensure that we have all the improvement initiatives going on at the same time. Plus, by creating this cross-functional team, we are making sure that uh, the decision and uh, improve improvements are not uh, biased. So they, they all considered from the different perspectives. So we have a group that would be working on uh, business control, cash management, information technology, with the supply chain, supply chain is a big one because uh, it directly affects the, the cycle time of, it. especially in our manufacturing world. I mean, it's very critical. I always depend on the how fast I would, I would receive the parts I need to assemble the thing. This is very important, and critical. IT technology also the infrastructure. Do, we, do I have a good internet? Do I want to create some project that would help me to do I have the internet? So things like that. So every single project, project requires cross-functional team. How they work? They, they select, the, well, first of all, we created this uh, program that, uh, if, remember I was telling you toll gates. Each toll gate, you have to pass from each toll gate. So first toll gate, you have to be able to select the right project, project and clarify big uh, picture. Yeah. Of course, your project have to be aligned with the strategic uh, goals and vision. 
you have to be able to prioritize project based on the impact, uh, based on the value of resources and timing. Things like tools like you know project charts are helpful in this case. The second part is select. You have to train. You have to select the team, train the team, and ensure that you have the right leadership and ownership. Uh, you have to be able to select the right team and uh, develop a training plan for this one. The third phase is all about developing and implementing improvement plans, uh, utilizing the right improvement methodology. Maybe sometimes you don't need to spend a whole lot of time. You 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 know the answer, then you just implement it. Sometimes you need resources and justify your resources and investments, capital expenses. That's when the Lean Six Sigma methodology comes uh, very useful. Uh, the fourth phase, it's all about you know, managing of excellence, controlling the quality, making sure that you have a frequent review progress, remove barriers. It helps to remove the barriers, uh, maybe check on continuous basis how good you are and uh, the progress status. The Fifth stage, stage helps you to sustain the game results, and implement effective control plans, and maybe to take the same approach and use it in other projects. Well, there are numerous frameworks and tools. Uh, this is not the panacea, the answer for all your problems, but at least this gives you, you know, structured approach, a systematic approach to solve these problems. And uh, Lean Six Sigma, in my experience, really, helpful as long as you know what tools to use and when to you know, what stages you use this is uh yeah the last slide it this is the a little bit out of topic on operational excellence but i mean i i use this concept in all my project because this diagram uh, came from toyota way uh, for those of you who are familiar with the uh, Toyota company and uh, familiar with uh, the methodology they use. So this, this diagram illustrates what is important. Uh, that that is important. It's very important having you know these elements all together as an ecosystem, uh, and it must be practiced every day in every consistent manner. All leaders have to leave the. The philosophy every day not just saying i believe in this they have to be consistent they have to be uh, behave as an example the leaders have to be they, they have to be led by example in in this model major uh, commitments are summarized in four p's so first base uh, is uh, your management decision on long term sometimes it, it's decision that you are taking now Maybe it's very hard for, for now. It's not uh, profitable for now, but in the long run, it's good for the financial goals in the long run. So sometimes you have to be able to make those commitments and decisions. Spend some money on training, invest some capital expenses on uh, purchasing good equipment and tooling. Yes, you spend now money, then in the future, you will see the benefit, reap the benefit. The second base is about having the right process. The right process will produce the right results. So make sure, sure that you have the right and controllable process within the spec limits. The third base is adding value to the organization by developing your people, by developing your partners. The fourth is making sure that you have cultivated this you know, environment that everybody knows uh, how to solve their problems. Everybody knows if there is a problem, hope they create a cross-functional team. They have a certain standard procedure. They know how to show their work and they know how to reap the benefit from their work. So this is what I wanted to share with you. And I'm open for the question. I know that we are right on time, unfortunately, but I don't know if we have a time or not. I, for those of you who might be willing to stay longer and I have extra 15 minutes and uh, I would be happy to answer and hear your feedback, see, see how it goes. Thank you for your attention. Yeah.